What are you doing, man? You're not you're not a star. You can't just talk into the microphone. So let's let's take it from the top, I guess. One, two, three. Hey everyone, my name's Geneva and I am not your average oddity. I am your still recovering from COVID and pneumonia oddity. It's a real fun time over here. So you probably saw my part one last week, which was basically the home videos of me while I was battling COVID. I took videos for the first four weeks that I was sick, basically when I thought I could go back to work for one day and unsuccessfully, uh, yeah, that was just, it did not go well. I stopped taking videos after that. I think I was just so focused on trying to get better at that point that taking videos kind of took a backseat to everything else. So basically, here here's where, where we left off. I was like, I'm shaking. I have a hot, I had like a hot flash. I was thought I was going to throw up. I almost, I didn't think I could drive home. Like that's how horrible I felt. So I called my doctor, made an appointment. They saw me virtually and they were like, you should not be feeling this bad, this far out from being sick. We're concerned. So they had me go to the hospital and I got a chest x-ray and a, a D-dimer uh, blood test which is a special blood test that checks for clots, essentially. Both the chest x-ray and the D-dimer came back normal, but I was still getting worse and worse. So they were like, we want to see you in person. You need to come in like before the end of the week. I ended up going home to my parents' house uh, because my primary is actually closer to, to them than it is to where I am now and they did more tests um, when I was there. Although everything came back clear on the chest x-ray, my lungs still didn't sound great. And I, I was dealing with a racing heartbeat and some chest tightness the, the entire time I was sick. And they were able to show, well, on the test that I was doing that my heart was racing. I was having tachycardia. So they're like, we're getting you in to see a cardiologist next week and I think that you have atypical pneumonia, which means it doesn't show up on a chest x-ray. So we're putting you on antibiotics right now. That was on a Friday. So then, I mean, the antibiotics started kicking my butt right away, but it didn't really make me feel that much better um, at all. So on a Monday, I came back for a follow-up and they had me do a PFT, which is a pulmonary function test. And so you blow into this tubey thing and I failed it. <laughs> I was so surprised. I was like, I failed. And she was like, well, failing something like this is probably more telling <laughs> than passing. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. So I ended up getting a steroid pack and an inhaler, which I've never I mean, my lungs have never been really a problem, so I've never had an inhaler before. And she's like, okay, come back on Friday, we'll see how things are going. And the steroid pack made me feel great, you know, because um, it really gives you more energy. I was still having a really low energy problem at this point. And the inhaler was helping too. And then I went to see the cardiologist that week. And the cardiologist was like, okay, we're going to have you wear a heart halter and we're gonna have you do an echo and we're gonna see what's going on. The end of that week, your 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 progress is going well, but we're gonna we're gonna see how how you do the next week. And I came back the next week and I was you know, I hit a point where I just stopped improving and I wasn't getting worse, but I wasn't getting any better. And so then they're like, I, I think you need another round of antibiotics. Like I, I don't think we've we've kicked it out. Let me tell you. The second round of antibiotics. Oh, it worked. I I don't think the first one really did anything at all because the second one I really started coughing out nasty stuff from my lungs. I really just like it really got me. But that meant it was working. The reason I got the second round of antibiotics is be hi Casey. She's trying to get my necklace. Hold on. <laughs> Hi! You wanna be on camera? You just want my necklace. Hey that hey there, ma'am. You're so cute.
Casey wants to be in this. Don't touch that. Why don't you get down? Oh, you don't want to? Well, how about I tell the story to you then? So, the re- No, don't touch that. I love you. <laughs> That's not gonna make me allow you to touch it. It wouldn't be a Not Your Average Oddity video if there wasn't a cat. So the reason I got the second antibiotic is my I was getting blood work this whole time. Hey! <laughs> I was getting blood work this whole time. <laughs> and my white blood count kept going up after the first antibiotic, meaning that as I suspected, it didn't really do anything. So they're like, I mean, you have an infection. You're not feeling better and it should not be climbing after an antibiotic. So I got the second one. When I went back for another follow-up, my uh, they took my blood again to just check the white blood count and nothing else. And they were like, okay, if you get any worse, you call immediately, but uh, we'll see you in two weeks and see if See if this did it. See if you're doing good, right? That's what happened, Case. Uh, uh, this entire process took about three to four weeks, and I stayed at my parents' house that whole time um, just because I was not healthy, as we all saw in the last video. The entire time I was sick, I never realized how truly sick I was. I just thought, well, next week I'll be better, next week I'll be better. And I should have known that when I had to teach myself how to sit back up for more than 25 minutes at a time that I wasn't well. I was very much not well, but I didn't realize it. I just, in the thick of it, I didn't realize how sick I was. Between the follow-up and that appointment, I wore the heart holter and it was the itchiest two days of my entire life. I had to have been allergic to the gel on the, uh, the stickers. I'm actually getting the results of that sometime after well, before this video is posted, but I'm assuming it's going to come back normal. So what symptoms I still have left? I still have some fatigue. Um, it's been getting better. Turns out I was incredibly vitamin D deficient, and that is also why uh, it took so long for me to get better. Um, but I've been on like a mega doses of vitamin D to help. And that's been helping a lot with the fatigue as well. Still have the racing heart. Uh, I still get a little chest tightness now and then, but that's going away. And I still have a sporadic fever. Sometimes it has to, it comes with exertion. Sometimes I just wake up with a fever. Doesn't make sense. You know, spoon theory. I only have a certain amount of spoons for the day at this point. Some days I wake up and I have more spoons than others. It's really hard doing things around my apartment, like my laundry or taking out the trash some, sometimes. Because, I mean, I have to kind of decide what's, I have to prioritize a lot. Okay, what has to be done today and what can I push to tomorrow? And I can only do one or two things and that's it for the whole day. And. If I do too much, I tire myself out for two to three days after, and I really can't do anything. And that's incredibly scary um, and frustrating because as a healthy 25-year-old, uh, going from that to having to manage these symptoms is, is scary. <laughs> There's no other word around it. You you saw how scared I was in those videos. I mean, I'm not crying every day, but it's it's incredibly daunting to n know that you've gone through something that there isn't a ton of information about worldwide, um, and you're kind of just having to go with the flow with all of your doctors. Everyone's learning this together, and there's something comforting about that, but there's also more, it's more like, what are we doing? <laughs> when will I be better? How will I know? <sighs> My next steps right now are, uh, I still have to get the echo, so I have that follow-up. And then I also have an infectious diseases appointment, which honestly, before COVID, I would have never known you 
you would go see infectious diseases. Um, <laughs> so maybe they'll be able to enlighten me on some of what I'm going through. We'll see. Yeah, this has just been my journey that I've been on and I'll keep you updated. I'm hoping since I'm going back to work this week, um, now that I'm, you know, I would consider myself at about 80-85%. That, that makes me well enough to go back to work, so I'm excited to get a routine back. So I should be filming more fun videos again and taking my time and learning my new normal. I miss everyone. I hope you miss me. I'm back and we'll see you next time.